Today we're going to show you how to drill the buckets for a two bucket water filter system that's a gravity flow water filter system. It looks like this when it's completed. Two buckets of any size with two lids, a spigot installed in the bottom for dispensing water out the bottom, and then inside of the top bucket you have put in some kind of a filter that the water can flow through and then drip out through a stem into the bottom bucket. The two kinds of filters that we have known to use are ceramic water filters. These are about a quarter of an inch thick and then they are packed inside with activated carbon charcoal or rapid pures that have also a little stem on them and these are electrostatically charged fibers. And both of these work great. So we're going to show you how to drill this and let's talk about drilling. Okay, first of all, you have to have the right kind of drill bit. You need spade drill bits for this. This is a three-quarter inch spade drill bit. This is what you use for drilling the hole for the spigot. And then you also need a half inch spade drill bit. You can get a three pack at Harbor Freight for about $3.50 roughly that has a one inch, a three-quarter inch, and a half inch. You don't need the one inch, but that's fine. Okay, now, drilling these can be a little tricky, and if you don't know what you're doing and you don't be really careful, you can wreck your bucket in just a second, and you can get a triangular jagged hole that no longer will work for the spigot or for the water filters, it'll just leak. So we're going to explain how you can be really careful and get this right and have that not happen. If you happen to have an old bucket that you can practice on, that's a really good idea. This is my practice bucket. But let's suppose you don't have one. And let's just show you from scratch. All right. So you get your two buckets and your two tear tab lids. The first lid is just going to sit on the top to keep the top water from getting anything blowing in. You're never going to drill a hole in it. And so set that aside so that you don't accidentally drill a hole in it. And then we'll set that one aside for the spigot. And let's drill first the bottom of this bucket. It's really important that you drill this in the right spot. So I'm going to tell you where the right spot is. We want to drill this in a place that is not in the middle. There's all this extra plastic in the middle that makes it really hard for the stem on this to go through. So we're going to drill in a spot that is away from all of the riding and all the plastic bumps that sit here and is a nice flat place where the little rubber washer can fit without running into anything else and is far enough away from the edge and far enough away from the center to not get us in trouble. And this is how you do that. These particular buckets are Ropac brand buckets and every bucket is different but this is how it works on this. I have set the bucket here so that it says Ropac right there and at about 10.30 as I'm looking at it Here's midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, going around 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and at about 10.30, there's a wonderful clear space here that has no writing, no bumps, no plastic sticking out. And having figured this out, I am going to measure and mark a spot. I'm going to line this up with the edge of the bucket, going through the center, and I'm going to measure from this inner side of the outer edge, I'm going to measure two and three-eighths inches in and mark it. I will show you. So 
I have measured in two and three eighths inch in and I marked a little hole with my Sharpie. That's a perfect spot. Now I'm going to take an awl, if you can see that, a little pointy sharp thing. An ice pick works great also. And I'm going to put a pilot hole right there. I poked it all the way through. And now I'm going to take my drill, make sure it's tight, make sure it is going clockwise, which means it's going forward down into the bucket. And I am going to, and this is the half inch drill bit, I'm going to put that point in the pilot hole and I'm going to start really slowly. And I have to make sure that the bit is absolutely perpendicular to the bottom of the bucket or else you have happening what happened to those terrible holes over there. It'll grab and flip the bucket and make triangular holes and here's how you can tell if it's perpendicular. You start slowly and a little circle starts to get cut by the outer edge of that drill bit. That circle needs to be appearing everywhere, not just a piece of the circle, everywhere. And I can make adjustments so that I make sure that it's appearing everywhere. And then I can speed up and it goes through. Okay. And since we're in my living room, I have a towel to catch all the little junk. Now, I have to make sure that it's big enough. And although it says half inch, every half inch bit is different. So your half inch might not be the same half inch that my half inch bit is. So I'm going to put the pre-filter sock on this to just protect it, and I'm going to check it. That's a little tight. I don't want to have to smash this through the hole, which could make it hard and break my filter. So I'm going to take a rat tail file and just file it a little teeny bit bigger. About three times around does the trick. Much easier. I'm happy with that. All right. And that is how it looks now, the hole. Now I'm going to turn that bucket over and take the other lid, the lid that fits between the buckets, because I need a hole that will line up perfectly with that hole I just drilled. And here I have to do the same thing. I have to find a spot that is this time, instead of 2 and 3 eighths inch in, it's 2 and 5 eighths inch, inches in from this inner circle towards the center. So I take my ruler and I line it up with the center, make sure it goes all the way to the edge and at 2 and 5 eighths I've marked it with my Sharpie. Now another, another good thing to do though is I can set this bucket on and make sure that where I have marked is inside of the hole. I can see my marking right through this hole so I know I've done it. Good. And then I will set this on the bucket so that I'm not drilling into my carpet and floor. I need to make my pilot hole and I brace this really strongly, put the point in the pilot hole and again I'm going to start slow and I'm going to watch, watch for the circle to start getting cut in the bucket evenly all the way around the circle and I will make adjustments to make sure that I'm perpendicular. I'm going slow. I have to adjust. I can speed up. I already know that this hole is a little bit too little. 
for my drill bit. And we'll just check. Great. Okay. Set those aside and change bits. I need the three quarter inch bit for the spigot. And this is probably just an OCD thing on my part, but I like for this to line up with the handle right down the middle. I have measured with the ruler up from the bottom one and three fourths inches. And I've made my little mark. You don't need to draw a dotted line. I just did that so that you could see. Now I'm going to poke my pilot hole. This bucket is not exactly horizontal, so I have to be careful. I'm going to really brace it well. I'm going to go really slow and make sure that the circle is appearing evenly all the way around as I drill. I'm adjusting a little. You can clean up the plastic off the edge of the holes later. All right, it's all drilled. Now let's show you how to assemble this. So first, I'm going to take my ceramic filter. It comes with two um, rubber or neoprene washers and a wing nut. I'm going to make sure one washer is on the stem and I'm going to thread the stem through the hole. Then I'm going to do the lid. Then I'm going to put on the other washer. I have to hold this on inside the bucket. Those ceramic filters are fragile, and if you drop it, it's toast. So I put on the other washer, and now I put on the wing nut. You only hand tighten these. Do not use a tool. If you over tighten it, you can crack your filter, you can crack your lid or the bottom of your bucket. So that's really good. And because I haven't torn the tab off of that with the ceramic filter, I can set that on the ground, which is a nice convenience. With these, the stem's longer. You can't do that. You'd have to lay it down. Now, let me just take this. I already had this one installed. So let me just quickly take this off and show you how to do the washers on this. The spigot comes with two beveled washers. Those are beveled, and you want the bevels to go in to the hole. So the first washer is, has been put on here so that the bevel will face into the hole, like that. Then I'm going to take the bevel on the inside and put it on the stem so that the bevel pokes into the hole and then I take the nut and screw that on. The spigots are plastic, the buckets are plastic, so you don't want to over tighten them. Just tight enough that the water doesn't leak, which doesn't take a lot. And there is my system. And then I could get my other lid back and put over the top. Now here is what I would do if I had a pre-filter bag. 
I would take yet another bucket and send my husband or my son or my uncle or myself with a wagon to the river to get water or wherever you're going to get water from. And then I would let that water sit for several hours so that the sediment can settle to the bottom. Then, when I'm ready, I would pour carefully that water so, no, so I don't stir up the sediment through some kind of pre-filter bag. You can pour it through a towel, through your Levi's, through anything you want. But these bags have really small pores, and they will get out a lot more than just a regular cloth. So you pour the water through this. It doesn't take long. It just flies through. It comes down to the bottom bucket, where you then just put the lid on and let it work its way through. Five gallons would probably take five to ten minutes to get through on this kind of filter, and it would take um, half a day to get through on the ceramic filter. I would filter it through both myself. I would have a four-bucket system. I would put it through the ceramic one first, and then I would take the clean water out of the bottom here and put it through two more buckets that has this in it, have this in it. So anyway, that's how I would do it. Now, one more thing to show you. Actually, let me just show you a broken one. This is what they look like if they break, except for this had activated carbon charcoal inside that has been dumped out. But it was nice to see how thick they are, about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, if any of you have these five gallon blue stackable jugs, they're lovely. They have a spigot that you can get that screws into this lid. However, you can see that that is solid right there. So on mine, I have my lids and have these out in the garage, but I bought an extra lid and I drilled the hole through that with the three quarter inch spade bit. And I would get one of these, and I would do that now, and then I would not have this sitting on the jug. I would have this sitting someplace else where it can't get thrown and broken. And then if I had 10 jugs, I would just be putting this on the one that we're dispensing water from. And I just first poked a hole. I put this on, and actually, so that you don't get junk inside your bucket, take a plastic bag and just poke it down in there screw that on, um, do a pilot hole right in the center, and then with your three-quarter inch spade bit, drill down in, being careful until you have the hole and can install your spigot. And that is how you do this. <laughs>